Hey folks, you know what I just realized? Okay, I realized it a while ago. You can't joke anymore. Now, I don't just mean comedy is under siege, which it is, with political correctness. You've got Mike Ward being asked to pay $35,000 because he made a joke that was very funny involving a disfigured gentleman who has a strange condition that morphs his face. Uh, and I'm not talking about the guy in Vancouver who made fun of some lesbian hecklers. I believe his fee was $15,000. But I'm talking about you come up with an absurd scenario and it already exists. Like in the new Ricky Gervais movie, he shoots a woman with a t-shirt cannon and she sues him. That's happening in real life. And I think a great example of this is to look at the unbelievably hilarious show, Mr. Show which was around 1995 to 1998. Political correctness had seemed to be taking a time out during that time, or at least they were brave enough to make whatever jokes they wanted. And I keep seeing in reality today their made up crazy universe be real. Like the other day, I just, I didn't include this because I don't have evidence, but the other day I heard that a bunch of BLM protesters were screaming, we want a ladder, we want a ladder, because they wanted to take down a Confederate flag and burn it. They just think you can chant things and it happens. That's a Mr. Show sketch. Give us the hot dogs, we demand our clothes down this hot dog stand. Give us the hot dogs, we demand our clothes down this hot dog stand. <laughs> but again, because I don't have evidence of them screaming, we want, we want a ladder, I didn't include it. But here are 10, count them, 10 examples of Mr. Show being totally absurd and modern America making it so. All right, number one, we have Rap the Musical, a hilarious parody of how annoying musical ours, musicals are and how stupid it would be if you incorporated rap and old-timey broadway -y stuff. Oh, going on a drive-by, just me, Posse, and me. I'm a gangster of the old school, you can call me OG. Rap the Musical is a celebration for the entire family. And then in reality, we have the much applauded and hated by everyone good, Hamilton. God damn it, I can't believe how popular this is. It is as popular as it is irritating. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. And yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. Number two, swearing in ads. That was a bizarre thing that Mr. Show came up with, and it was funny because it was so absurd. It's great. It's so big, it's fucking great. <laughs> and now we have that in everything. It's totally normal to swear in ads right now. By the way, I've heard bitch and shit on TV, but uh, check out this son of a bitch, shit ton of meat, and I put that shit on everything. Son of a blueberry. It's a shit ton of meat, man. <laughs> I put that on everything. They also just throw an asterisk now if they want to say that they don't like futons. That's common. Uh, number three. Now, I don't have a video of this, but when Mr. Show did a reunion tour, I believe it was in 2002, they uh, had a sketch in it that's, that's not filmed that has, uh, I'll, I'll actually quote uh, David Cross here, 50% of the team, Bob and David. We have a sketch about a retarded guy who's convicted of murder, but the state deems that he's too retarded to execute. So their solution is to hire the greatest minds in science to tinker with his brain. And they're very proud of their results because he turns into a very smart, well-spoken person, and then they kill him. Hilarious, right? Bizarre. What a great way to lampoon the death penalty and how strange its parameters are. Well, three years later, we've got Daryl R. Atkins, who makes the front page of the New York Times because while investigating his own trial, his IQ went from 59, below retarded, to 75, above retarded, which makes him eligible for state killing. Okay, this one is spooky. Number four. Mr. Show, the, the great thing about Mr. Show is they didn't date themselves by getting specific, so if they wanted to make fun of Marilyn Manson or something, they would make it Norma Jean Monster. And this was a smart move because Marilyn Manson was the only band like that to make fun of. They could make fun of the whole metal genre that way. So they had an episode called Norma Jean Monster, Monster, remember that word, and they had them 
in a therapy class. Check this out. Great. Great, Chris. It's good to see you again. Yeah, how you been? We have so much catching up to do. Yeah. So I take it you guys have been getting along? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then we tune in seven years later to 2004, where that's what Metallica are doing. They're going to see a therapist. You couldn't talk about his lyrics, therefore he couldn't talk about your drumming. Right. Do you know what I mean? And you and him did the solos, so you weren't allowed to comment on the solos. Do you know what I mean? There was like oh, rules. Are you telling me that, that those boundaries are gone now? <laughs> I think it's really lame, I'm not using the word gay, really lame that heavy metal bands even do, I don't even like seeing James Hetfield go shopping in flip-flops. I want them all to live in a basement and eat human brains like they do in the Norwegian death metal scene. I definitely don't want them going to therapy. Well, in this modern day and age, they go to therapy. Which brings us to number five, Marilyn Mozzarella's Pizzarella Pie Parlors, where they had a heavy metal restaurant. Yeah. Heavy metal is going to become so corporate and mainstream that you'll see heavy metal restaurants. So let's make fun of this crazy notion. Marilyn Mozzarella employees are fun, rebellious extroverts who make their own rules. And rule number one, always dress appropriately. And then moments later, Alice Cooper launches Coopertown, where it's exactly that. It is a... Pizzarella pie parlor for a scary rock and roller. After rocking the world for over four decades, Alice Cooper brought his hometown the ultimate showdown venue, brimming with barbecue, burgers, and the headlining big unit. Which brings us to number six. The movie Run, Ronnie, Run wasn't technically Mr. Show, but it was a character from Mr. Show that became a movie. I don't think they made any money off this. I think HBO got all the money for that. And uh, I believe the movie was ruined by an editor who hijacked it and made it his own. I think when Bob Odenkirk was asked what the hell happened, he said, Hey, give me the raw footage for Casablanca and I can make you a piece of shit. Run, Ronnie, Run did not do well with critics, but uh, it has some funny moments, including a time towards the end there where they're watching TV and uh, they're checking out a show in the background that has fishing with guns, apostrophe N. We regrettably interrupt fishing with guns with this special news bulletin. Then you cut to the New York Times uh, in 2004, and they have an expose on people in Vermont who like to go fishing with guns. You can no longer be absurd enough. Now we're jumping over to number seven. This is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I became friends with Jay Johnson after it because I stalked him so much. I, this image is burned in my wife and, and my eyes. Maybe why we had kids in the first place. It's definitely why we got them these same sandals. It was about the horrible stress kids go through and how a baby needs a massage. Check, it, check out his feet during this scene. Penetrates layers of cute chub to kill pain where it starts. You think we coddle babies too much? You think we're too absurd? You think we, we've gone past the future and are now in the post-future where we would say massage babies? Yes, you're correct. Massaging babies is no longer a joke. They do that. I want you to take some oil, put it in your hand. We want to use a cold-pressed vegetable oil. Um, so we're looking um, either at a hoba oil or a grapeseed oil is the most ideal. Another fantastic Mr. Show sketch. What are we up to now? Eight? I always get these numbers wrong. Yes, number eight. Bob Odenkirk was a guy. Larry Keist, I believe his name was. He was a rapist. And everywhere he went, the guy who was massaging the baby, Jay Johnson, would follow him around with a placard that said, Larry Keist, rapist. And he always had to uh, announce himself like that when he was on the phone, letting everyone know that he is a rapist. <laughs> Cold calls, my favorite part of the day. <laughs> Hello, I'm Larry Cleese. I'm a rapist. Have you considered insurance? Cut to a few years later, and a judge is forcing a sex offender to wear a shirt that identifies him as a sex offender. We can't joke anymore. And I know you don't have any sympathy for sex offenders, but just so you know, that world has become totally absurd. We've got 11-year-olds who touched their sister and are now no longer being allowed to be near 
young kids for the rest of their lives, including their sister, so they end up in foster care. We have young people horsing around with young people, and even though they're 14-year-olds who sat on a 12-year-old's face as a gag, they're now sex offenders until they're in their 80s. So we have gone off the deep end. See, my premise here isn't there's a funny coincidence going on and Mr. Show's sketches become real. My premise is we as a society have become so totally absurd that comedians can't joke about it anymore because it's all true. Like blowing up the moon. Sound crazy enough? Thank you very much. We have an announcement to make uh, on July 4th of this year. America will blow up the moon. Well, it isn't. NASA sent a missile to the moon. NASA did try to blow up the moon. Okay. You, you don't, you're not totally on board. They weren't trying to obliterate the moon. I get you. I get you. I've got 10 examples here. This one is one of my favorite. They came up with a totally ridiculous idea that lampooned reality in dating shows. They thought, wouldn't it be funny if we just had them have sex and then discuss it? Because that's really what these dating shows are. Why beat around the bush? Let's go straight in and out of the bush and then discuss what it felt like. This was called Screwballs. <laughs> All right, well, let's see who our audience chose for you to have sex with. <laughs> Melanie the Waitress. <laughs> So what do you say? You want to have sex with her? That's, that's fine. And it's a real show. It's a real show called Sex Box that was very popular in the UK. And in fact, the reality here was more absurd than the Mr. Show sketch because they had sex live on TV and had really cutting, fascinating, important questions like, did you do anal? Did you have anal sex? As in a television first, our couples and a panel of experts hold a grown-up conversation about sex. Now there's plenty more examples. They had uh, mustard ANAs. Now there's Nuvani's mustard ANAs. Let's get the hell out of here. Uh, I believe Kraft or someone launched Dijon A's. <laughs> There's a new winner in mustard. Uh, they had a thing where a movie sued America for not watching it. We had a woman sue drive the movie because there wasn't enough driving in it. We had Garth Brooks standing outside the fire, which was incredibly similar to the Bob Lamont story. The examples go on and on and on. But it's worth a reality check when your entire culture has become so totally insane that the joke people can't make fun of anything because it's all real. Update. Those people chanting, get a ladder, get a ladder, uh, they're real, and we found the clip. The ladder, we'll take it down. All we need is a ladder. Can you give us a ladder? There's a firefighter with a ladder. Get 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 a ladder. Did you like that? Okay, check it out. I got a whole comedy show called How's It Going, A? Eh? You just have to click right here to subscribe.